It's raining, not a lot of light, so please excuse that. So a while ago I picked up this super cheap Polaroid camera from a thrift store. It was five bucks, can you believe that? Uh, I made a, a video about it. It's somewhere between like a first impression slash review of this camera, the Polaroid Pronto B, and also the film that it loads, which is the Polaroid SX70 film. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but for this video I'm going to be talking about some tips of working with these old Polaroids. This is stuff I've discovered along the way, and hopefully if you come across one of these, you won't be scared to try one out, because they can be a lot of fun. So first off, the Polaroid SX70 film is still super expensive. To give you an idea, the color film is about $40 and it only comes with eight photos per package. So that amounts to something like $5 a picture, which is super, super steep. And when you're just starting off, there's a big chance you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and you're gonna waste a lot of money. So what I found that helps out, at least here in Canada, the black and white film on Amazon is much cheaper. It's about $27 a package, which brings you to just over $3 Per photo. Everybody in America right now is probably like, what? But yeah, that's the, that's the price of things here. So my first tip is just go with black and white. Black and white has a really cool retro aesthetic. It's much cheaper and it's easier to learn on. So if you do decide to go with color one day, you'll have a higher chance of getting better results. The second thing is related to this camera in particular and other cheaper Polaroid cameras from this era, and that is that the viewfinder has no information whatsoever. The viewfinder is literally just a piece of plastic with an eyepiece. So all the focusing is done with zone focusing. If you're not familiar with zone focusing, zone focusing is setting a distance on your lens coupled with your aperture to calculate whereabouts the focus is going to be without having to use a viewfinder. If I'm like the average person, that is really difficult, especially on a camera like this. So a great tip I found was to use another camera to get your focus, use the distance reading on the lens, and plug it into here. This worked out particularly well with my tiny little rangefinder, since the camera is so small I had no problems fitting it in my bag and focusing as I went along. It might seem a little bit annoying to carry around two cameras, but the reality of it is is that I'm usually carrying two cameras anyways. Another thing that helped was having a light meter on my phone to calculate what the shutter speed was going to be for the camera. Generally, I would like to have a shutter speed that's pretty fast so I can minimize handshake when taking the pictures. I want the best results I can from very expensive film. And it gave me just a, a rough idea of what the meter is gonna try and go for in the scene. So that brings me to this little dial right here. This is the darkness dial. The, or you could call it exposure compensation. Turning this dial towards the black marks makes your shutter speed faster so your overall picture is going to be darker and turning it the other way makes your shutter speed slower it was kind of hard to get that information on youtube prior to this video so i hope that helps out i found when i was in a tricky lighting situation or i wasn't or i was concerned on the shutter speed being too slow darkening this dial making the shutter speed faster usually mitigated some of those worries for the most part the film's latitude is is pretty good so i didn't lose a lot of detail and the worst that kind of happened was that i silhouetted things but that kind that was kind of like a cool effect so that was fine you'd want to use your brightness dial when you're in a backlit situation if you're shooting someone against the sun or you're in a shadow area and there's a really bright area. This makes your shutter speed slower and exposes for the shadows. And just another quick tip I found was if you're if you are in a dark lighting situation, you can use just about anything as a makeshift tripod. It's just a matter of getting creative with your framing and what you want to aim for. Again, with these Polaroids, it's not an exact science. You don't know your shutter speed any of the time. It's just kind of a feel 
for what the camera might do. So you're probably thinking that this is a huge hassle for such an old camera with no flash. And I definitely agree with you. It's definitely a lot of work to get good pictures out of this thing. So if you're a beginner or you have money to spend on a, a really good Polaroid camera, I say go for that. I don't skip out and go to thrift stores and look for this type of stuff. But if you found this in your dad's closet or just wandering about for a really good price at like a garage sale, don't be afraid of this. There's definitely ways to tame it. And if you're a professional photographer doing shoots, having a Polaroid on you can be really valuable. I found that after a shoot, being able to give my client something physical, something tangible that they could have right away and also carry around with them as a piece of memorabilia was something really valuable. It's just like a cute little token and busting out this old guy has its certain charms to it. But seriously, if you can spare the money and get a Polaroid 1 Step 2 that just came out with a flash, you'll be much happier. Thank you.